The talk is about spontaneity and freedom. You know, there's such a thing as uh, soul sickness. I don't want to begin with a negative remark here. Um, all people who've gone through difficult childhood, difficult teenagehood, where your spontaneous joy was somehow clouded over by difficult emotions. You might have a case of soul sickness. Soul sickness is that original inability of the adult to dance in their bedroom, to kick off their shoes, put their feet in the grass, uh, to have some belly laughing. Everybody's had that as children, but it gets clouded over. This talk is the opposite of that. This is spontaneity and freedom. Uh, first of all, talking about the mind. When the mind, when the brain waves go from the very busy beta waves, that's your rational thinking, your anxious mind, the kind of mind that has 60,000 thoughts per day. When the brain goes from the busy theta, beta waves down to the theta waves, which are only 3.5 cycles per second, the calmness of the brain already gets you a step closer to spontaneity and freedom. So physiologically speaking, when the brain is less active as measured by an EEG machine, you are more likely to be in a state of spontaneity and freedom. Now, going on, as you come down from the head to the heart, you're accessing that state of spontaneity and freedom. In other words, the human mind on the average has about 60,000 thoughts per day. This is on the average. A lot of this is just self-talk and some of it is negative self-talk. Self-talk is this ongoing dialogue in the background. I can't do it. Maybe uh, I'm going to be fat. Maybe I'm getting too old. Maybe I'll never make money. It's just this constant recording happening in the back of your mind. And as you descend from the head to the heart, some of these 60,000 thoughts per day start to lessen and decrease. For example, with yoga postures, with meditation, with prayer, with walks in nature, you start having fewer talks per day. As you come down from the head to the heart, there's some immense healing that happens because 60,000 thoughts per day are making you tired, especially if some of them are negative recordings going on all the time. When we come down from the head to the heart, we start recovering some of our emotions and we get more in touch with the original emotions. At that point, we might feel like kicking off our shoes, taking off our socks, digging our feet into the grass, letting some wind go through our hair. If you have no hair, even better, the wind just goes right through you and gives you that feeling of spontaneity and freedom. Also, if you come to the belief that life is made of seasons, you know, as, as the mind becomes quieter and you start noticing that at 10 a.m., you were negative. At 10.15, you had a little smile on your face. By 10.30, you were laughing. You start to see that everything shall come to pass. This is a huge reckoning. It's a huge realization by a meditator that moods can pass, that springtime can pass into summertime, and summertime will go to autumn. Just the recognition that everything is impermanent. Everything comes to pass. The non-meditator will take a particular mood as very serious, as very lasting. In reality, nothing lasts. Your thoughts only last a few seconds. Moods might last 20 minutes and then they're gone. So as you mature in meditation, in prayer, in spirituality, you realize everything is seasonal. Your moods are seasonal. Your thoughts are momentary. 
your youth goes into maturity. Maturity goes into old age. But you know, somebody who has connected with their inner self is not afraid of an older age. I personally will tell you before this camera, I'm happier at the age of 66 than 26. You know, I had better looks at 26, but internally, I'm feeling much better at 66. So some people start feeling good with ripening. And if you really start to believe that everything is seasonal, moods pass, thoughts pass. You have a great meditation on Wednesday. On Thursday, you have not such a good meditation. It's okay because you're a mature meditator and you know that not every one of your meditations is going to be the same. You don't even miss the great meditation because you know the following Friday you're going to have another good meditation. Spontaneity and freedom means finding your core. What is your truth? What is your inborn talent? What is the social movement that you want to join? If you're happy on a bicycle, get on that bicycle. You start to find your truth, your uniqueness, what brings a smile to your face, the kind of woman, man, or even the sex, same sex that you want. What is the lover that makes you happy? You have to connect with your core. When you connect with your core, you start having self-acceptance, self-love. One of these days you'll sit outside in the yard and a breeze will hit you and for the first time in your life you feel like I'm a really nice guy or I'm a very desirable woman just because I am. I don't have to look like some supermodel. For the first time, this breeze is hitting me and I'm just feeling really good about who I am. White hair, no white hair, irrelevant. When you start to feel beautiful, a lot of people start saying hello. That I've seen all my life as a teacher. I went to a meditation center. There was an 85-year-old woman with long silver hair down here. All these young people, were trying to have tea and coffee with her. She was a magnet. You know, the white hair was magnetic. She had the smile on the face. Everybody wanted to be near that smile. Everybody else was fearful. Everybody was anxious. So that day at lunchtime, I realized it's not age. It's not cosmetics. This person was magnetic. She had come to peace with herself and she felt attractive. It's, it's an inner feeling. Spontaneity. Kicking off those shoes, taking off your socks, digging your toes into the grass, dancing, singing, liking yourself. That's spontaneity and freedom. Finally, if you have any kind of feeling that within you there's a force that makes this river run, Inside you, there's a force of life. In your mother's womb, you were blessed by a God force that allowed you to multiply yourselves. If you have any feeling that there is a more powerful force guiding your hand, something more powerful than your ego, the certainty that you are riding on a big spiritual palm that spiritual certainty that somebody's looking out for you will really quintuple your sense of spontaneity. Why? Because that fear of survival is gone. The what ifs. Where am I going to make my next dollar? That is gone when you are connected to your truth and you're connected to some force that wanted you to be alive exactly as you are. That's really all I've got to say. I won't give you any more unnecessary words. At the end of this video, take off your shoes, take off your socks, even if in your, you're in New York City. Find one patch of grass, dig in, let the wind go through your hair,